Hello, and welcome to CodePro, your source for helpful and effective programming tutorials. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning about the popular dependency manager called CocoaPods. We're going to be learning what CocoaPods is, how to install it, and then how to use CocoaPods to install a third-party library in your application. Okay, enough chit-chat, let's get started. If you're new to iOS development, you may have heard the term CocoaPods tossed around before, and you may have wondered to yourself, hmm, what is a CocoaPod? And quite frankly, all CocoaPods is is a form of dependency management. As we start to work on larger and larger projects, we don't want to have to rewrite the same code over and over and over. We want to use libraries, frameworks, or tools that other people have already written for us that we can quickly use in our project. And CocoaPods makes this really easy. Basically, you have what's called a pod file where you can define a list of dependencies and other third-party frameworks that you wish to use, and you can execute an install command and CocoaPods will go and fetch all of those libraries for you, pull them into your project and set them up. And that is what we are going to go over today. The first place you're going to want to check out is CocoaPods.org. Here you'll find all the documentation and the install guides for getting CocoaPods set up. If we go over to the Getting Started guide, you can see that the first command to even install CocoaPods is issued for us right here. And there's more documentation here that shows you how to do more things, pseudo list installation, updating CocoaPods, and then external resources and a bunch of other things as well. Assuming you don't have CocoaPods installed on your computer, the first thing we want to do is install CocoaPods. So go ahead and open up a terminal, and what we're going to do is type in the command sudo gem install CocoaPods. And this is going to prompt you for your password. If you want to do sudo list installation, there's instructions on the CocoaPods website for how to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and use my password and begin the installation. And this shouldn't take too long to set up, and as we can see, we're already done. Once CocoaPods is installed, if you type in pod, you'll get back a list of CocoaPods commands that you can use. The most popular commands that I tend to use personally are pod install, pod init, pod de integrate, and pod update, which is basically you know, initializing a pod file, installing pods, updating CocoaPods, or removing CocoaPods completely from my project. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is we need to create an iOS application in Xcode. And once we've done that, you can just go ahead and create a single view application. That, that'll be fine for this tutorial. But from the command line, we need to change directory into that project. So I've placed mine on my desktop, so I'm gonna just go and cd into the desktop, and then cd into the CocoaPods project. I'm gonna list what's in here. And the next thing I wanna do is type in pod init. And if we list what we have available, now we have a pod file. And like I said before, this is where we are going to define where are what dependencies we want to install. So I'm going to go ahead and open my pod file with vim. So vim pod file. The structure of a pod file is relatively straightforward. The main areas of interest are your targets or where your app target's going to be, your framework target, your test target, and so on and so forth. And inside of your target, you're going to include the pods that you want to expose to that target. So if we go look at the browser here, I went ahead and found two very popular networking libraries that are used uh, in iOS apps everywhere, uh, Alamo Fire and AF Networking. And if you look through the GitHub documentation, you'll see that there's usually installation instructions for CocoaPods. However, CocoaPods is not the only dependency manager out there. There's Carthage, and there's also the Swift Package Manager. So, the instructions are usually pretty clear. They'll show you kind of how your pod file needs to look and uh, even tell you the command to run. Same thing with AF networking. If we look at AF networking, we can see it has very similar instructions. So since we're Swifties, we're going to go ahead and use Alamo Fire and start uh, setting up our pod file here to support it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, just to make it simple, is I'm just going to copy parts of this over and bring it into mine. And I'm going to go ahead and replace my, plat my commented out platform iOS 9 and just put in uh, what they're recommending for me to use for my file. Uh, I'm already using frameworks on the target, so the only other thing I'll need to include here is the actual pod itself. 
Now, the way this works is you'll put the pod name and you can specify a version or up to a particular version and that's what this up to 4.5 means right here. So you have ways to lock into a particular version of a library if you choose to do so. So that's all we need for this part of the file. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here and go back to the command line. And the next command I'm going to run is pod install. And that's to go ahead and get that dependency into my project. And it looks like Alamo Fire has been successfully installed into the project. And there's one other important thing you have to remember. Generally, when you make a basic application, you tend to just open the project file itself. Once you install a pod, CocoaPods creates what's called a workspace. And a workspace allows for you to support multiple projects. So from now on, once you've installed a pod, you're going to have to open your project using the workspace. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So here's my project folder right here on my desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and click into it. And you'll notice that here's our project file, but we have a workspace file, and CocoaPods generated this for us once we hit pod install. You'll see the pod files here at the root directory of this uh, project or this app, and you'll see that here is our regular project folder, but then we have a folder called pods. This is where CocoaPods installs all the pods dependencies we specify in the pod file. And you can see the Alamo Fire is right here, and you have the source code and everything built in for us or installed for us. So now let's open the workspace and take a look here. If you try to open the project file, which is this blue file, you're going to get uh, a kind of error and you're going to have to use the workspace. And if we examine the project structure, we have our CocoaPods project, which is the name of the project I called mine. And then we have pods, which is another project. And inside of here, it has the pod file. We can also edit that pod file from here if it's easier than doing it in the command line. And we can go ahead and examine um, everything that comes with the dependencies that we uh, installed. So what we want to do next is see, okay, well, what if we don't want CocoaPods anymore in our project? What if we want to blow everything away? And, and that's quite simple too. We have another command called pod deintegrate. And if you see what happens here, project has been deintegrated, no traces of CocoaPods left in the project. And if we go look at that root level here, you can see that that little pods folder is gone, completely blown away. Um, it's red here, meaning that reference has been lost. Um, it's completely gone. So I'm going to go ahead and install it back. So just by doing a pod install. And uh, we'll go ahead and actually use Alamo Fire to just make a quick network request. And then we'll show, that'll kind of demonstrate how easy it really is to uh, use another library um, right out of the box. So I'm back in my project here in my viewcontroller.swift file, and since the last command I ran was pod install, Alamo Fire is ready to go. So looking back over at the documentation, they show us, okay, this is how we can make a simple uh, web request and get a response back and do something with it. And the first thing that we need to do is actually import uh, the framework into our project. So that's what I'm going to do here is import Alamo Fire. And don't worry if that doesn't show up for you right away. Sometimes you need to actually compile your project after you run pod install for the autocomplete to pick up uh, the actual name of that dependency. Um, so I'm just going to create a little function here, private func, execute web request. And uh, just to demonstrate this, we'll call it once uh, view did load starts. And I'm just going to simply copy their sample from here. I'm going to paste it into my little method here and I'm going to run that as soon as this view controller loads just so we can see it working in action. So let me go ahead and build that right now and make sure we don't have any compilation issues. And it looks like everything's good. So let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see what it looks like. So I fired up my simulator and I'm about to run a web request here using Alamo Fire and there's really not much to see visually here but I put some breakpoints in uh, right before the request starts and right when we get the response back. So I'll step through and uh, you can see that we're getting a response back from this request to httpbin.org for a get. And uh, we're going to just go ahead and print everything out like we expect. And it looks like we're getting some valid JSON back, some valid data back from the server. And uh, we can see all of that's reflected in the log right here. And that's how easy it is to install a third-party library and get it up and running in your project within minutes. 
And that wraps up our CocoaPods tutorial. So whether you're a one-man army indie developer or you're working on a large team, CocoaPods is just one of those fundamental skills that you just gotta know. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, let me know. Smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. And let me know in the comment section down below, what tutorial would you like to see next and what do you think would help you the most? So thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.